Hi, my name is Stefan. I'm a physics teacher, and today I'm going to explain to you what a vector is, uh, what it's used for, uh, how we express it, and how we do some simple calculations with it. Let's start with what a vector is. A vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. A simple example of a vector could be directions you're giving someone to go to the next metro station. You will say the metro is 200 meters that way. So you give a magnitude and you point into a certain direction. To represent the vector, we are often using arrows where the length of the arrow corresponds to the magnitude of the vector, like 200 meters, and the point of the arrow uh, pointing into the direction in which the vector is going. 200 meters that way. In physics, there are two main types of quantities. One is the vector and the other one is the scalar. Unlike the vector, the scalar is only a magnitude. It doesn't have a direction. An example of a scalar could be the temperature and an example of a vector, a force. For the other items in this list, can you decide whether it's a scalar or it's a vector? Did I get you with the speed and velocity one? That's a bit of a tricky one because in everyday language, we're actually not really distinguishing between the two. However, in physics, it's important to note if we talk about the speed, which just is the magnitude of the speed, for example, I'm driving five kilometers an hour, or the velocity, which is a vector. So on top of the speed, we're also specifying in which direction we're going. For example, five kilometers an hour towards the north. Vectors can be expressed in two ways. One of them is the one that is the more natural one, which is giving the magnitude of the vector and the direction. If not otherwise stated, the default is that we give angles as measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. Another way to express a vector is to give its component along the x and y axis. For example, 5 along the x axis and then 3 up along the y axis. If the angle was measured counterclockwise of the plus x axis, then we can use these formulas here to convert between magnitude and direction and x and y component. A little warning, however, that often the angles are not measured from the x-axis, and then you cannot use those formulas directly. Then you can either convert into the angle from the plus x-axis first, and then use the formulas, or just use SOCATOA in the triangles that you can find. In those triangles, the magnitude of the vector is always the hypotenuse. If you're using the formulas based on the angle from the x-axis, math will automatically give you positive and negative signs for the components. If you're using SOCATOA, you will have to attribute those signs by yourself by looking at which direction the vector is pointing at. Be careful, the actual location of the vector doesn't matter. So just because it's in the third quadrant doesn't mean that it has a negative x and a negative y direction in its components. The sign of the components depends only of the direction of the vector. So whether the vector is here, 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 or here doesn't make a difference when we write the vector in components. When we want to do math with vectors, the rules are a bit different than the rules for math with scalars. For example, when you add vectors, you cannot just add the magnitudes and the angles. Simple demonstration why this doesn't work. Let's take a vector of 2 meters uh, to the right, and then we add a vector of 2 meters 
to the left. If we add magnitude and direction, we would get four meters at some angle. But obviously, if you go two meters to the right and two meters to the left, you have a total of zero. So how do we add those vectors? There's two ways of doing so. One is adding the components, and the other is the head to tail method. For multiplication, it actually gets even more complicated as we have two different operations, the dot product and the cross product. However, at the beginning of the physics courses where you learn about vectors, you usually don't immediately need to multiply them, so we can leave the explanation for those two operations to later.